love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together, and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. I am so excited to introduce you to this next person. So Patience Mitchell is actually a BCB alum who was in my program whew, during the beginning of COVID. So she was actually the round in February of 2020. And, you know, we're able to touch base on how she's grown over the past year. And it's really cool because you get to actually have insight of, okay, after I graduate from BCB, after I'm done with the 12 weeks, what's next for me? How can I continue to grow? How can I continue to create confidence in every single aspect of my life? And I think her story is really unique and beautiful because she has the background and experience of a fitness instructor and something, I don't know if you know this, but I also was a fitness instructor growing up when I was in college and you know, having that feeling of, of self-judgment and feeling like, oh, am, do I fit the part or whatever that is. So if you've ever felt like you don't know if you fit the part or fit the script, you are going to love Patient's story and her journey throughout BCB because she is fully stepping into her most confident self every single day, every single class she's been teaching since graduating. And it's just been awesome to be able to touch base with her, stay connected and see her thrive over these past years since graduating. Um, definitely looking forward to you guys getting to know her more. And here she is. We have patients joining us tonight. She's going to be talking about her experience throughout BCB. And then one year later where she's at now. Yay. What's up patients? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you sound crystal clear. That's awesome. Oh, good. Good. I'm never sure. I never know. How are you yeah. doing tonight? Are you coming back from teaching? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm gr- I'm great. I'm really good. How about you? Yes, I'm great. I'm great. I'm just, you know, I feel like I wish I could just do some FaceTime calls with you guys all the time because it's just so great seeing everyone's face. So yeah. you know, we'll have to have a little phone date soon. <laughs> but um, I'm just really excited to hear from you and sharing your story and sharing like where you're at now. I know that it's been, I think, one year and a couple months since you joined BCB last February, which was honestly the most interesting time to join BCB ever, like bar none. It was, it was, so February, was it like right, like a week before everything hit with COVID, right? Yeah, it was, was yeah, because I think we had like a week of like normalcy, whatever that was was before. Everyone was home. Yeah. And then everyone was, and we thought, oh, it'll be like two weeks. And then here we are a year later. Oh my gosh. I just remember, (laughs) like, I will never forget that experience because it's something we all lived through, like in that moment, but I'm still excited for you to share about it. But there were a lot of lessons that were learned that I didn't even know we were going to be learning throughout the 12 So true. Oh my gosh. Yes. But I'm, I reached out to you because it's been really cool to see just with BCB, your experience throughout it. Um, where you kind of started. So I do want you to share a little bit about like before when you were coming into the program. So where you were at like a year ago. So let's say January of 2020 um, in our, in our naivety or whatever the word is (laughs) um, before you joined BCB and then kind of what you feel like your experience was during it. Um, I know it was a while ago, so that's okay. Because what I really want to get to is like sharing and celebrating where you're at now. Yeah. Yeah. So I think when we did our, you know, discovery call, Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I had just started teaching group fitness again Mm -hmm. after, oh gosh, maybe a two or three year break. Um, you know, and I, I was in a lot of, um, a transition period, I would say in my life where I, Mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling super confident and I didn't feel like I was really showing up when I was teaching Mm -hmm. classes, um, Mm -hmm. you know, because my whole life I've been yo-yo dieting and I've been told I'm in a bigger body. Oh, Mm -hmm. maybe I don't really fit the fitness instructor mold. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I have been dealing with disordered eating and, um, you know, body image issues. I'm 38 
And I remember telling you on that discovery call, like, I don't want to step into my forties with this taking up so much space in my life because I'm too smart for that. And I deserve more out of my life than to have this being the center of all of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the place I was in. I was starting to, you know, teach group fitness and I wasn't, I I didn't really feel like I was really leaning into that and really showing up. And I knew Mm -hmm. if I wanted to continue doing that, which I did um, because I really felt called to do it, Mm -hmm. then I needed to kind of work on myself and then COVID happened (laughs) and I wasn't (laughs) teaching anymore. Um, (laughs) But you know, I, I think, BCB for me happened at the exact right time. Um, and it's, I, it's, COVID's awful. So bef- I'm going to qualify before I say this. COVID it was of terrible, course. still is terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, and my prayers and heart go out to everybody that that's Absolutely. been affected by it and lost people to it. But um, I do think it was really good for me to have that time to step back and reevaluate, reassess and really start um, you know, start down the, the path that's opened the next chapter of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you said it really well. Cause it was something that was so unexpected for us. Mm-hmm. Like we were not expecting this. It's kind of like God, the universe, you were, you were like, I think I need to focus on myself. And you were like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah. we only let you focus on you. You're going to have to sit in a room in your home yeah. with you. And just you're <laughs> literally not going to be able to do anything else. Literally yeah, can't like, go anywhere. Yeah. That's it. You can't see anybody. You're like, I'm done doing this whole like inner work <laughs> stuff. Cause I was not expecting to do that. Much. No, yeah, it's like, it's like, I, I'm, I'm in myself a little too much right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So it's nice to definitely get a balance from that. But you, you definitely, I mean, I think one of the biggest things was coming into it. I I loved, um, I related to your story so much because like when we talked on the discovery call, I just remember being like, I, I know what you mean with the the fitness instructing. Mm -hmm. Like I was in the fitness instructing. There's this, there's this stigma or this feeling like you have to be a certain size. You have to be a certain age. You have to look a certain way. And um, if you don't fit that mold perfectly, then you're not good enough and you don't deserve yeah. to be on the stage of fitness. Right. And, um, we can really get in our heads about it. And it's crazy because you're literally working out in front of a mirror or in front of people. So it's like magnifying anything we're putting yes. ourselves down for. From. Yes. So what was your experience? So like, I know you came in, you were doing some, some work through yourself. So I want to kind of hear a little bit more and we'll come back to that, like about your experience through the program. So some of the self work you did, And then on the other end, so you started back into the fitness side of things and teaching again and what that was like going back out into the world. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I think you and I, because I would laugh a lot about the woo-woo, like the woo-woo, because I'm not a woo-woo person. Yep. not a, (laughs) when you were like, oh, you should meditate. And I'm like, you're like, what? (laughs) Sure. I ain't got time for that. All right. Like, (laughs) no. Let's Um, do some burpees. (laughs) Yeah. I'll just do some burpees or lift some weights and just get through that. But yeah, yeah, let's. I did. I think the the one thing that was so incredibly helpful for me, mm-hmm. um, I was just going a hundred and fifty percent. I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning to go work at the studio. Mm-hmm. Then I was maybe teaching a class after work. In between there, I had a full time job that was you know pretty stressful and um, mm-hmm. required a lot, and. I was getting burned out and I didn't even realize it. So the one thing that I think you really helped me with, I mean, you helped me with a lot of things, but, but the one thing I think that was missing was that inner work, what I call the woo woo stuff. Woo woo. <laughs> I think, I think people need to, to do that from time to time. Mm-hmm. I think you have to do things like meditate or be in nature, whatever that is for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and have that morning routine to, to really center yourself. And that was the one thing I was missing. Cause I, I just wasn't doing that. So I established a morning routine, which I still have today. Um, I know <laughs> who would have thought me, the anti-woo-woo person meditating like every day and, you know, journaling, like, who am I? Uh, um, do come true. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. So I, I think that was a huge piece for me. And what was really interesting during COVID is I had moments where I thought, okay, maybe this is actually a sign that I'm not meant to be in the fitness space. Like maybe this is it because I'm already having this doubt. Maybe, maybe this really is the sign that I'm not supposed to be here doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And what I took out of BCB was confidence Mm -hmm. and really learned that, you know, in the fitness space, the thing that's lacking and the thing that I have to offer is empathy. Mm -hmm. I'm leading with empathy and I can meet a participant or a client where they are because have I been the biggest person in a fitness? Yes, I have. And sometimes it's me and I'm the instructor. Hello. You know, Mm -hmm. so um, I think through that, I I found my confidence and I was lucky enough. um, And I I really attribute this to you because you helped Mm -hmm. me with this. Um, When I wasn't able to teach, I found an option to teach virtually, teach an entire new format, kickboxing, which I've never done before. Um, over Zoom to people literally all over the world. And I would not have been able to do that if I had not taken some of the things like the morning routine and Mm -hmm. evaluating like, what is it about my body that, why is that so important to me? And is it really that important at the end of the day? Um, And so I I just was able to step into my confidence, get in front of a Zoom room of people, you know, yes. and, and teach fitness and, you know, had some success with that. And then, you know, going back to in-person teaching, um, the, the woman that I teach with my, my partner in crime, as I call her, she, yes. the first class that I taught, she was like, it's, you're like a different instructor than you were several months ago. And so I haven't heard this part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and she just, um, yeah, she was like, it's like a different patience has, has come through. And I attribute that to, to the program um, mm-hmm. because I think I was able to get to the root of, um, you know, why, why did I feel this insecure? Why am I feeling like this? And a lot of it, you know, had to do with the way I've grown up, the messages that I've gotten throughout my life. Um, and you really helped me sort of peel that back. I still still, I'm not perfect, right? Like I still None have of us bad are. body image days where I'm like, Oh, I wish I didn't have this like hip fat. I wish this didn't happen. But, mm-hmm. um, I think the, the best gift you gave me from this program is when I have those days reframing my perspective and mm-hmm. shifting it and saying, you know, that, okay, so what, you know, who, who cares? No one's looking at that except for you. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I was just talking to Crystal about this before. I know you were popped on, but it's like, I'm, uh, you're so kind to attribute this to BCB. And the thing is, is like you had that within you, like that teacher that was coming out and that empathy that you had within you and the confidence to show up and radiate on the stage when you're, when you're teaching your, your classes. I mean, it was always there. It's just a matter of trusting yourself and taking that yeah. leap and showing up. And I'm so glad you did because you're making an impact on all these women. Well, and I think that's the gift you have as a coach, right? Like you're able to see things in people that we don't see. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think that's a true, true gift. So I I thank thank you you for that. Thank you. You're so sweet. That means a lot. Um, Honestly, you know, my mission on this world. I remember our last call together. I talked about that. Like my mission, I I say, oh gosh, I'm chill. I know some of the girls are going to be on the call next week. So closing ceremonies next week for this current round, but oh yay! I I know it's so exciting, exciting. but, um, but we're, I remember we sat down and it was the craziest season. And so basically we had our drink and we were just chatting and I was saying like, I just want you to take what you've learned here and make an impact on at least one other person. Mm -hmm. And you took that and ran with it, girl. You really did. And I'm so proud and it's so amazing. And I know I've reached out to you a couple of times about it, but just seeing you do that and inspire others to show up confidently in their bodies, to work out and not mm-hmm. worry about the other stuff. Like we need right. more of you in the fitness industry because it's, okay. it, it's so necessary. So thank you. Thank you. I always say, I, I think I made a post about this on Instagram. I'm not here to influence. I'm here to disrupt. And so, yes. you know, <laughs> I love that. And, and so I, I, I appreciate that because I think um, you're right. The, the fitness space, the wellness space, I think there are a lot of people not ill-intentioned out there at all, but, mm-hmm. you know, aren't really tuned in to meeting people where they are and understanding mm-hmm. that, you know, fitness is, is a space that people should enjoy. It's not yeah. something that they should feel gosh, I need to punish myself or I need to earn Mm -hmm. my food or, you know, any of that crap. So, um, 
I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. I'm, I'm so glad that you've done that. And so um, what are some other big takeaways or things just kind of like where you're at with your life now? So with just like showing up more confidently, I know you're doing that with fitness, just some other things. I want you to celebrate you a little bit. So I hope that you took some time to do that before we got on the call, oh. but it's important. And so I'll, ch- I'll brag on you all day, but I want you to think like, what are something you're like, I'm really proud that I'm at this space right now in my life. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to say, um, showing up on social media is a big deal for me because I'm an introvert and yeah, which yeah. is, is weird when I say that, cause people are like, well, you get up in a room full of people and put a mic on and, mm. you know, throw weights up in the air. So why, why is this? <laughs> why <could> you be <laughs> worried different. about that? It's, like, it's totally different. That's like, I feel mm. like I have like a persona for, you know, when I know I'm teaching. You right. Um, but showing up on social media and I think being, you know, a little vulnerable and telling my story, yeah. um, you know, has been something really huge for me because it's not, it doesn't come naturally to me. And I am not a tech person, like TikTok. You're doing I'm great. Like, what? I'm like, huh? What, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh um, but I, I think showing up and just sharing, you know, what, I've learned in my 38 years on this planet and, and hopefully, Mm -hmm. um, helping someone else, um, Mm -hmm. whether it's with fitness or just in their life. And, you know, I really am, I used to see my empathy as sort of a, a a weakness, Mm -hmm. um, in my day job and in my career that hasn't always been seen as a strength. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm really learning to lean into that and lead with that. And I have to say, I, you know, I've connected with more students in in real life that come into my classes. And Mm -hmm. and when I was teaching kickboxing, I still have um, some, some great people that I met through that. And it was all, you know, Hey, I connected with you because like, you didn't make me feel shame about Mm -hmm. me not being able to do the move perfectly or Mm -hmm. gosh, I turned on my camera for the first time because like you're wearing a sports bra and you know, why shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, if you can't wear a sports bra in your own home, in your garage during Mm -hmm. COVID, then, you know, come on, when else would you be able to do that? So Mm -hmm. um, that's really what I think I've, I've taken. And it's a huge takeaway for me is to to step into that, lean into the empathy and really Mm. just come rushing into the fitness space and just putting myself out there and just, you know, whether it's social media or knocking on the door of a studio um, and saying, Hey, like I'm I'm here, I'm going to (laughs) teach. Maybe I don't look the part, but I'm Uh here anyway. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing that I've I've taken away from it. Mm. That's amazing. I mean, you said it so well with empathy it's everything. I mean, that's what's so crazy is like you coming from a space of empathy. Um, the world needed that so much in 2020, you know, I mean, it was something that when we were talking through everything going on, I mean, I'm not talking just COVID we're talking George Floyd, yeah, we're talking about right. all these years right. of everything. Like I remember oh, yeah. connecting with you on this and it was like, you had so much empathy and it's something that I really respected from you. Cause it's really easy for us to just say, Nope, I'm just gonna put my blinders on, yeah. but no, you, constantly come from a place of empathy even when it's hard and that's beautiful and I'm so thankful that you did that and continue to do that like I said in the fitness industry um because it's so needed and what's cool is like you've done that and shown that like hey I need to be here that like you said in the beginning like you said when you joined BCB you felt like called to teach group fitness Mm -hmm. and then there was this little bit inside you during it that was like maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't teach and so Mm -hmm. How do you feel like you worked through that with yourself to where like you were able to follow that purpose or what was something that you feel like you um, trusted in yourself or something you would tell someone else that's looking for like that, that calling or something as far as like taking that leap, trusting themselves? Yeah. I mean, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I mean, I, I loved going to class. I loved the people in class and I thought, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't stop dreaming about doing it. And I would think about it all the time and I would spend a lot of energy. So I, you know, decided to get my uh, personal training certification and I really didn't have to have that to teach, but I wanted to have it because I, I wanted to understand movement patterns and and be the best to, you know, my students that I could possibly be. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I would say if, if you can't stop thinking about it and it, it is constantly in your thoughts and you have that little voice saying, but what if you can, mm-hmm. 
go for it. You just have to, you just have to do it. And, you know, I had some barriers in front of me. Um, I mean, the fitness space is not a space for older people typically. <laughs> um, and so to be doing this, you know, in my late thirties, um, and I'll, I'll do it for as long as I can possibly do it. You better. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, who it, it, age is just really a number. And, and so yeah. I, I just would encourage anybody who, if, if you have something and you have a voice that keeps nagging you, it's almost like a gnat. I call it the gnat that just like you try to <laughs> swat it away and it doesn't quite go uh -huh. away. Um, you know, listen to it, tune mm -hmm. into it because what you're spending energy thinking about um, and planning, that's what you need to be doing. Yeah. Oh, mic drop Gosh, this <laughs> night is just blowing my mind because it's just like you are so right you're so right and and I'm so glad that you could share this part of you today because someone is listening right now or watching the replay that is like I needed to hear this today so we do have some girls on right now who are about to join so they're joining not right now live but like they're yeah, about yeah. to join the next round yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they start in a week and so just any like advice or thing that you would say to them about like going to this program for their next 12 weeks yeah I I would say open your mind don't have any preconceived expectations um be open because I, when I tell you I'm not a woo woo person, and when I tell you that I <laughs> battled you on this every fight. step of, I mean it, like I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So go into this with an open mind and open heart and be receptive to learning things, even the things that may be hard for you to learn about yourself, because those lessons are going to be so meaningful to you and if you can take the time and really put everything you have into this you're going to get just tenfold out of it that you, you mm. put into it so I just would encourage you go in with an open heart and open mind if Jordan tells you to be woo-woo you be woo-woo you know <laughs> woo -woo. Just, just do it like it's it's totally fine oh this has been such an amazing night I appreciate you sharing this and your words of wisdom I'm looking forward to just seeing you continue to show up and be this amazing light in Charlotte um, and beyond. Cause I know that you're putting yourself out there a little more with your story yeah. online, Inst Instagram and social media is scary, but like, keep doing it. Your story deserves to be said, like keep doing it. Okay. Thank you. I'm hold you to it. I appreciate you. Thanks for being on tonight, guys. Make sure you follow patients. Um, on Instagram. Make sure you check out, especially when you're in Charlotte or even if you're in Charlotte visiting um, down the road. Where are you Where are you teaching right now? So I teach at Fit Atelier, which is okay. a boutique. Oh, um, one of my clients, Erica, goes there all the time. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes, tailoring style. I love her. Yeah. She's fantastic. I feel awesome. like to be in the same space with her, I'm like famous by proxy because she's very That's famous so here. So awesome. <laughs> she's a great, she's such a yeah. down to earth girl, but I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So I post my schedule on you. there every week. So um, awesome. if you're in Charlotte, would love, love to see you. Yes. Oh, that's great. So guys, check her out. Um, thank you for being on tonight. I truly appreciate you, patients. You know, like I said, from the very beginning, you can't get rid of me. So still now you're not <laughs> going to get rid of me. I'll be checking in and seeing how share your story is going. Um, but I'm so thankful for you and I appreciate you. And I hope you have an amazing week. Thanks thank for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it's it. Awesome. Bye girl. Bye. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot, support at JagoFit360.com, for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.